In addition, they say, cost by spending hours and hours looking down at our phone. Dopamine loop. Vibration in my pocket. And you ignore it. That's a smartphone zombie. Dopamine. You wake up in the morning, go for a walk, do some work, go for a run, or do some strength training, eat some food, watch a movie, play some video games, and then go to bed. Smartphone addiction is a real problem and it's a big one. So for a month I left my iPhone behind. The results were quite unexpected, but let's start at the beginning. Let's face it, humans have a smartphone problem. What was supposed to be helping us achieve great, amazing things has enslaved us into a perpetual neckband pose. Like slaves bowing down to the glowing rectangular king. We're content consumers now and the urge to consume more is very strong regardless of the quality of said content. <laughs> Now let's talk about the look. Have you noticed that many people doing meaningless things on their phones have that look on their faces as if they're doing something extremely important? And then you look over their shoulder and you realize that they're kind of just refreshing a feed of people dancing or lip syncing or other useless crap. But that look on their face looks like they're figuring out quantum physics or ending world hunger. This is what a smartphone has turned us into. Next to that, we're obsessed with viewing other people's lives and obviously they're only sharing the good bits, so we're getting constantly more and more depressed by comparing our life to that perfect Instagram reel. Yeah, that's one fine looking barbecue pit. Why doesn't mine look like that? It's an endless loop of misery. We carry a supercomputer in our pockets, way more powerful than the one that has put man on the moon, and yet we use it to watch a fat man dressed as a pig eating dog food. While most of my work is happening online, I decided to take a little break from it and use a dumb phone for a month. The results were spectacular. For the entire month of that digital detox, I was using this phone, the Mudita Pure. It has calls, text, a music player, a meditation timer, and an alarm clock. No camera, no social media, no internet, nothing besides that. You don't really use this phone for anything other than communicating with people, and that's the primary use of a phone, isn't it? That meant I had to modify my carry a little bit, because now I couldn't take a photo or take a note, so I took my ZV-1 camera for photos and videos with me everywhere, and I took my trusty iPod Classic for listening to music because I was able to put more of it than into the pure. And I took a standard notebook with a small pen to take notes and ideas on the go. And you know what? It worked. Having multiple single-purpose devices is actually liberating because you can focus on the task at hand and actually perform it better. When taking a photo with a camera, you only have to worry about taking the best photo. No notification will ding in just the wrong time and put you off balance. And also putting real words to paper, you know, using a pen, and yes, I'm terrible at it still, my handwriting is horrible, but just that act of doing something that will stay there, that you can't undo or easily correct, I think it got my creative juices flowing a little bit better that month. It was also a great idea filter, because if you can't undo something, you're not gonna put down the really bad ideas. Okay, let's talk about the mental health, because I believe my condition has worsened a little bit since I started getting a little bit popular. And sure, I turned off all notifications from my phone pretty early on. But getting 500 Twitter notifications, hundreds of messages and countless YouTube comments 
was really messing with my head. I was practically compelled to see a new comment under my newest YouTube video, which basically led to hundreds or thousands of these little micro interactions of going into the app, reading the comment, replying or not, and then getting out of it. 12 seconds later. I do this over and over again in the endless loop of addictive behavior. That loop, repeating so often every day, was breaking my focus, breaking my concentration, and I think it was making me a little bit less creative because of that. This way, I control the things, not the device. I started to notice the world around me a lot more right now. Started to notice the beauty in little things or what people are doing, and yeah, most of them are looking into to their smartphones but without all those distractions most of my focus goes towards the perceived reality and you know what i feel happier with that approach i feel more productive and i also feel more present more in the moment not really feeling like my life is slipping through my fingers and not having that feeling of not really accomplishing anything in a day. I think I'm going to continue that way for as long as I can. Do you think you're addicted to your smartphone? Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We're gonna be doing more and more cool videos here. And obviously, have a beautiful day.